thank you so much for joining us today for the very first session that we've been done we've done in a long time on get ready to downsize it's really uh, intended to be an introductory session to help you start asking yourself the questions hold on just a second I don't know that this Facebook streaming is going to work, so I want to make sure that I have no um, concerns in presenting to the rest of our audience today as they attend. So there we go. We have started um, after kind of a bit of a hiatus in presenting the seminar. There's been a lot of um, news in, lately about uh, the real estate market and how this is really expanding um, people's options about downsizing because perhaps for the first time they've considered what um, their homes might be worth and how, how this might be able to fund their future uh, downsizing needs. So let's get started right away. Um, we've been doing these seminars for oh, several years now. And when we started, of course, these were all in person. We were meeting in community centers and senior centers and libraries, and people would come and join us and enjoy maybe even a bit of a, a meal with us. And it was always a great social interactive time. And I'm going to say that as much as I love Zoom, it's really not my preference to be doing this um, in terms of uh, remote connection. I'd much rather be with you face to face so that we could actually um, answer your questions. So if you've ever been on a Zoom meeting before, you know that a little bit of this is interactive, but for the most part, there's going to be a lot of information coming to you. Um, and I want you to please answer, uh, have your questions answered, okay? So anything that you're thinking about, there is an opportunity in the, ta the chat box to ask your questions. And I'm just going to show you where that is. And we're going to get started. So who is this for? This is an in, uh, intended to be for people who are still really contemplating their, uh, their options. And maybe you've thought about it, but you're not quite sure exactly what is pr promoting you to this idea. Uh, we're also going to be dealing with whatever obstacles you may have put up uh, between you and a home that more uh, fit your needs. Um, so we're also going to help you start with a vision because when you create a vision, then the next step is you can make a plan. And there is no timeline implied here. We're not trying to strong arm you as a real estate company into listing your home. That's not the intention here. It's really just about discussing the options and seeing if this is something that is viable for you. And what would have to happen in your life for it to be the right time. Okay, so we also wanna make sure you have an opportunity to ask your questions. So, so many people uh, I speak to in my neighborhood, in my sphere, they ask themselves, is this the right time to consider downsizing? There's so much involved. It's such a multifaceted decision. And, and really, whether or not you sell your house is kind of only one part of it. There are other things to consider. Like we think of being a, a senior as almost being like a new teenage era that you can reimagine your life. You can recreate your future. And my goal is always for my clients to have a future that is bigger than their past. So let's start talking about why you might be here. You're either here because you're currently in a home that is larger than you need, and you're wondering if there might be better things to do with the equity that you've tied up in it, or you anticipate the time when there's going to be uh, more of a burden associated with living in your home than there is uh, a blessing. 
So if this is your situation, first of all, I want to congratulate you on being here because you've decided to make a decision. <laughs> and I know that's kind of a convoluted way of saying it, but if you push it off into the future, we know that circumstance will make the decision for you. And that is the worst kind of decision making possible. So when I say that we are deciding to decide, if there's only one thing that you take away from today, I would hope that that would be the opportunity to create a vision and share it with the people who are important to you and understand when that might come to play. So the truth is, is that everyone is going to downsize at, at some point or another. And whether that is under your own volition with you choosing the time, place, the circumstances, or if that is because of those circumstances that I talked about. Uh, so perhaps that is something we want to celebrate, a celebrate being proactive, that you don't wait until you have to downsize. You can even start this process when it's merely a choice that you want to downsize. So I see this all the time with my clients who are in the uh, older decades, in the 70s, and the 80s, and the 90s, where all of a sudden the window of opportunity is closing, that their health doesn't permit it, or they can't handle the stress, or they just don't have the physical strength to take on this that seems when they end up saying they're just going to stay in their home. And that's a lot of times a burden to the people around them. People are worried. Uh, their, their loved ones, their children are worried that they're safe. And so more and more, I am seeing my clients in their 50s and their 60s decide to downsize far before they so-called have to, but because they have that equity that they want to do more interesting things with. If COVID has taught us anything, we have realized that our possessions really don't bring us that much joy. It's the people, it's the experiences, it's the opportunities to grow as individuals. And lots of times the, the brick and mortar that we've accumulated over the decades is what we're going to use to fund those new adventures. So I understand that when we get older, we start to increasingly fear losing control. We want to be the captains of our own ship. And I would wish for you that your decision-making relative to downsizing would be completely under your own authority and not, as I said, dictated by circumstances or health or finances. Those things are really not the best way to make decisions, are they? So. When we think about what me, might be driving us to, to consider downsizing, I'm going to suggest that the plan you make is the result of kind of what you value in life. And there's no right or wrong. This is certainly not a value-laden decision on my part. It, and I don't have a, an outcome that I'm going to prescribe for you. It's simply an opportunity to self-identify what you think is the important aspects uh, that you want to build into that downsizing. So for example, people tend, broadly speaking, to fit into one of two camps or somewhere kind of along the way. Are you somebody who really values freedom? Uh, or are you somebody who, on the other end, is very committed to creating stability? This is important because when, in, in terms of the decisions you make, if you are somebody who really values freedom and is invigorated by the idea of pulling up stakes and perhaps moving to a new part of our country or spending part of the time down south or just starting a grand new adventure, a new chapter, well, then that's going to kind of dictate some of the things that you say no to. So if you are saying yes to freedom, it means that you might be making other choices than somebody for whom stability is one of their core values. So for example, if you have uh, deep 
community connections that are very important to you and that you want to maintain, whether that be a social group uh, or, or a faith community or volunteer projects that you're involved in, then perhaps when it comes time to downsizing, the idea of pulling up stakes and moving to BC is just the last on your list or spending half a year up at the cottage or, uh, doesn't make sense because you've got these other commitments or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just start first and foremost by putting ourselves on this um, continuum and see where you are. Are you more towards this freedom side of decision-making? Is that what informs your decisions or are you more towards the stability side? And again, just wanna reiterate, there's no right or wrong. It's what suits you. And you're gonna see in a minute why this connects to downsizing. So you're gonna see that we have identified, and it's kind of funny because it roughly corresponds to the four colors in our, in our um, logo here, but what is driving your decision about what that downsizing looks like? For example, let's talk about the people who are highly relational. These are people for whom their primary and social connections are really going to drive their decision making when it comes to downsize. So tell me if any of these relate to you. And I'd like you to make note of the ones that you feel resonate, okay? So for example, when we downsize, we plan to move to a community near our kids and grandkids, or we have deep community connections and we wouldn't wanna move away or my friends are an important support group for me and I can't imagine life without them. Or number four, what about my clubs, memberships and activities? I can't leave those. Or wherever I move has to have people my own age group living there too. So let's just pause for a second. Which of these or any of these or none of these really resonated with you? And I wanna focus, for example, on the first one. A lot of my downsizing clients are moving from the bigger suburban areas out a little further because that's where their kids are. And why are their kids there? Because that's what their kids can afford. So you can see that uh, if your kids are living out in Durham somewhere, you know, like um, Pickering or Ajax, or if they're up in Newmarket or Keswick, these are the areas where you're going to probably want to live reasonably close by um, if that's what your value is. So if your value is maintaining and strengthening those relationships and you want to be where your kids are, well, then it maybe means moving outside of the GTA to be where they are. But on the other hand, if you're volunteering and you've got Probus and you've got the Euchre Club and you, you know, curl in the winter, whatever that looks like. Maybe when you downsize, you want to stay exactly in the same city or town, but you want to be in different accommodations. So you see where this is heading? Let's look at the next one. These are experiential people. And this, I'm going to say, tends to be the people who are just, you know, on the earlier edge of retirement. And they have been living in suburban accommodations for a long time and they're finished being the hockey mom or the soccer dad. And now they wanna spend some time living it up while they can. So let me know if any of these resonate with you. We're free, it's time to shed suburban living and finally live for us. Or it's our dream to spend winters somewhere warm and winter free. Number three, new chapter, new possibilities, time to reinvent myself or ourselves. I, we plan to check out that great new development out of town. Number five, who knows, maybe we'll just rent for a year and have an adventure. Now, speaking of adventures, just this last weekend, I was away with my children and we rented a cabin at a KOA campsite. And while we were walking around, oh my gosh, there were these humongous luxury motor coaches that people had clearly retired to. It does seem like the average 
person driving these was, you know, in their retirement age. And I just thought, oh my gosh, can you imagine what a lifestyle that would be just to live in your luxury? It's almost like, like a rock star tour bus and just go from park to park all across Canada, maybe into the US. That would be just some people's idea of the good life. And so maybe it's that, or maybe it's living up in Friday Harbor or someplace where you're going to be experiencing new things. For me, I can say that living downtown, having lived in suburban Richmond Hill for 30 years, I love the idea of a downtown condo. Not forever, but just for a season where I could go and go to the theater and try out the new restaurants and walk along the harbor front. So whatever that looks like for you, Let's make that a reality, okay? That's the plan. Now, a lot of people fall into this group of the yellow people. These are people who are practically minded. It's not so much about the feelings or the experiences, although everybody is a mixture. Let's just you know acknowledge that. But these are the people who are just looking at the numbers, practically speaking and saying, why are we living in a 2,500 square foot house when we only really live in three rooms of it, the kitchen, the family room, and the master bedroom. So true. And, and why are we spending so much time on property taxes and utilities? And as we get older, we tend to pay for more and more maintenance. People to do the, the eaves, you know, the, the gutters and clean those out for the winter or shovel the sidewalks or mow the grass. As we get up in age, more and more money is spent on maintaining this. And even if you're mortgage free, there still are costs that are associated with living in a house bigger than you need. So I guess number four is, is really the, the, the question to answer. I can manage all this stuff, but the question is, do I really want to? So you're not in a situation where you have to move, but maybe you want to, to move because number five says the more stuff, the more worries. I'm just ready for a carefree retirement. So long before health or mobility or finances come into the, the picture, you might decide that you want something that is more smart sized to your reality. Okay, not right or wrong, but a lot of people fall into this camp where there isn't a pressing issue. So the timeline's a little more flexible, but they really just realize this is such a waste of a lot of things. Now, unfortunately, I do get clients in this category. And these, these are the people for whom it really has become a must move situation. It's a situation like ever since the accident, I can't manage the stairs so well. I've encountered, unfortunately, many clients for whom the dining room has become their bedroom because they can't do the stairs. Or the kids are worried they're calling into their mom every day to make sure you know that she's still safe and healthy and then it becomes part of the sandwich generation like me to have to worry about that uh, and so you know that's not ideal for everyone if i ever want to be free from debt the only way is to sell this house and i can tell you this has happened with me i have had the most lovely clients who you know for various reasons were approaching retirement age but could not afford to actually stop working and then when we sold their house they were able to formally retire and to me that was just such a um a great feeling to know that we had made such a difference in their lives so how about number three or four i fear for my well-being by staying in my house either financially emotionally or physically and again, this is like worst case scenario. We never want to get to this, this point in our uh, retirement where we are afraid to be in our house. Or here's another one I see in my own neighborhood where people are no longer maintaining the property, probably because they don't have the money to hire people. So the roof, the windows, you know, whatever, just starts to become uh, a big, huge problem and they don't know how to get out and the best way in this circumstance is to of course hire somebody like myself who is a downsizing expert who can help them navigate that process okay so 
if you were to think of all of those four categories, the relational, the experiential, the practical, or you're in a critical situation, which of these are the ones that are motivating you to even consider downsizing? I'll give you a second to make a note there for yourself. Our main motivation to downsize is, okay, and we're gonna move on. Are you ready? Are there any questions? This is a great time to stop and ask questions. Anybody wanna share anything? Okay, well, you let me know because as I said, normally, we do these very interactively and it's not so much of a lecture as a, a workshop. So let's talk about what some of those obstacles are to moving forward. If you're here today, you probably haven't downsized, right? So why, why not? What has, you know, what have you been telling yourself about downsizing? And I'm gonna tell you what I hear when I'm knocking on doors or speaking to clients after, our seminars, this is what I hear. Uh, I don't know where to go. Uh, sure, like it's great. I'm gonna you know, have all this money from selling my house, but I really don't know where I wanna live. Or it's too emotionally daunting right now. Right now, I just have so much on my plate, so much stress, I can't even manage handling one more thing. Or I can't face all the work more like the physical aspect of it, the packing up, the clearing out. It's a bad time right now because of the market. Well, <laughs> obviously you read the newspapers. That is completely not true. Uh, we'll talk about the market next time. In specifics, we will give you some property options next time. But for now, let's just say we can discount that one right away. My house needs a lot of work in order to sell. I don't wanna leave my gardens. I hear this quite a bit. Or what will I do with all my stuff? And what about my parents' estate stuff? And my married uh, son stuff? How is that all gonna fit into a smaller house? Well, I've heard that condos are small and boxy and have high maintenance fees. What will I do with Mr. Boots or Fido? Can my pets come with me? I have a cottage, but I don't wanna live there in the winter. This is going to take a lot of money. My husband's health isn't good right now. Here's the other one. <laughs> I do hear this quite a bit. They are going to take me out in a pine box. Well, let me just address that one because if you've ever had to deal with an estate, you realize what a huge burden, obstacle, pain in the neck that is for the people who are left behind. Uh, Unfortunately, we've had to do it twice in my family. And even though I was only kind of on the outside looking in, the stress and the stuff and the paper and the probate, oh my gosh, it's such a bad time to have to deal with any of that when you're grieving. And so, you know, for your kids, for your loved ones, it's really not the best option. And plus we have some huge tax implications if you were to stay in your home until the end. And we wanna minimize the amount of money we give to the government. Am I right? Okay, so each one of these are as common obstacles that I hear in my conversations with downsizing seniors and I'm gonna tell you that we have, there's nothing you can say to me pretty much that I haven't already heard. And if you want to, to downsize, then each one of these has a solution and we're gonna take one and just kind of debunk it. Okay, so the most common one I'm gonna suggest is the stuff. And the stuff is, is not easy. I'm not gonna lie to you. We all have far too much in our homes. We have a bad case of <laughs> affluenza, but we actually have an entire webinar on that about decluttering because it's the number one thing to increase the resale value of your home. And it's a process. It's not something that we typically do in you know a week or two. It's something that we usually spend a couple of months getting done, but it is doable. And we have sold almost 80 homes um, 
And a lot of those are downsizers. So I know that it can be done. Let's just look at this. Uh, my or our biggest blockage is, let's just say, too much stuff. Okay, so this is a brainstorming sheet where we can create solutions um, based on what people are telling me are their biggest blockages. So if your biggest blockage is, let's just talk about stuff as being a common place where people just kind of come to a screeching halt. Well, like I said, there are options. Usually in life, when we are trying to solve a problem, it takes time or it takes money, <laughs> right? Am I right? So if you have the time and you're not really considering downsizing for months or a, you know, a year or so, well, then this is something that can be attacked very systematically. We can be working on this. I can give you an idea of what you could keep in the house in order to sell it and the things that you could either donate, gift, sell, whatever it is. Okay, so there's lots of things that we can do with that kind of timeline. And it is this kind of steady, steady Eddie wins the race. The other option is that you can hire somebody. If you have the money and you don't have the time or the wherewithal or even the interest, there are a ton of companies right now that have cropped up to deal with this exact issue of the seniors surplus. Uh, and that just speaks to how common, how prevalent this issue is, is that people all have too much stuff. And there are websites now devoted to online options for your stuff. And virtually everything sells, whether it's a collection of uh, rakes and garden tools or it's China teacups, everything in between, they always sell. And you might be surprised what some of them will fetch. So there are practical answers to having too much stuff. And as somebody who works in this niche all the time, I know that we can help you get that going, okay? So whatever you have as a smart, successful, attractive person, <laughs> there's nothing in this list or maybe even your own item that could really permanently stop you from doing this. Sometimes it's a timeline adjustment. Sometimes it's a allocating the right resources to it, um, but it's always something that we can overcome. Now, you have not gotten to this stage in life, and I count myself in the 55 plus age group now. There's nothing that, there's, there's nothing here that we could not overcome because we've already overcome so much. You don't get to this age without climbing a few mountains, okay? So don't you worry about it. I have answers for each of these. And if you have something specific, I would love to hear it, okay? So we're gonna move on. We've created an understanding of what our, our motivations are, where we possibly could wanna go or what's important to us, kind of like the process of elimination. Um, yes to this, no to that. And we've, think, we've been thinking about the things that are kind of our blockages. And now I really want you to kind of picture that you're over that hurdle, that you've overcome that challenge. You're kind of heading in the general path that you've determined by what's important to you. And uh, we're gonna talk about what would you do, for example, if you were to win the lottery. So many people think in terms of goals and fantasies and visions of the future in terms of money. So let's just use this as kind of some blue sky thinking. What people say the same kind of common four or five things about if they won the lottery. So enough money that you are stinking rich, whatever that means to you. Would you travel around the world? Would you buy each kid a big house? Would you start some kind of charitable foundation and, and give back to the world? Or some other kind of wild and crazy philanthropic idea? None of these are right or wrong, it's just what's important to you. So if you were to win some like multi-million dollar lottery, we think of in terms of these kind of basic categories. But 
I'm going to tell you, if you are participating today from the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, and you live in a detached home, the good news is you are already a millionaire, but you just can't access it because it's tied up in bricks and mortar, right? So if we were to pare this back a bit, you're not a multimillionaire, but you're just, just merely a millionaire, what would you do? Well, maybe what downsizing can do for you is pay for that trip while you're still young enough to enjoy it or help the kids with a down with a deposit or the, the down payment on their house or make the donations now while you can realize the tax benefits or pay off some debt and have that empty nest, that, that nest egg, I mean, to invest for retirement. I love number four. As somebody who is a self-employed contractor, you know, I don't have pension other than what I create for myself. And so many of us are approaching retirement without a company um, supplied pension that to have your nest egg invested and you can be drawing money down to help improve the quality of your lifestyle, to me, that's huge. So I think this is a great idea. You could possibly downsize to invest in other real estate. Uh -huh, what do I mean? Like the idea of downsizing your big house and buying something for you and then buying an income property. You know, this is all doable. It just has to be something that you want. So why wait until you have to move? Do it because you want to, not because you have to. I think that message is coming clear. I've been uh, repeating myself a little bit here, but let's see what this is. Don't wait so long to start traveling. You know, my grandparents are a cautionary tale, uh, have passed now, we miss them terribly. But you know, when my grandpa died, he had $55,000 in a checking account. And yet they wouldn't go to Florida anymore, you know, where they love to escape the winters, you know, it was just too daunting for them too much stress. And I just thought, what a pity, what that money could have done for them if they had spent it more freely when they were younger. So this jar analogy is something that I've, I've seen before on, on the internet. And it's the idea that if you were to put the big rocks of your retirement into the jar first, the things that you must do, the things that when you sell your home, for example, you absolutely are committed to seeing some of the funds go to that. Then there are the smaller rocks, the things that you would like to do, and then the sand. And if you had time left, money left over, these are the things you would want to do. So although we are focusing on the monetary benefits of downsizing, there are a lot of emotional, physical, you know, all of that as well. It's just much harder to quantify, isn't it? Like we really can't put a price tag on peace of mind, but in terms of pure financial considerations, what would you do with the proceeds from the sale of your house that would, in, would ensure that your retirement was carefree, enjoyable, and accomplishing the things that you feel are important for you? Okay, so now we have an opportunity to write what I would call is a mission statement for downsizing. This kind of is pulling everything together, everything that we've been talking about on one mission statement that you can write for yourself, maybe as a singleton, a uh, single person, maybe as a couple. So. The thing that I think that downsizing does the most for people is it creates space for freedom. Right now, especially after COVID, we have all been looking at these four walls almost like a prison, like not, not exaggerating. It's been really tough. Um, but what would being free from this structure do for you? Maybe it would give you some more time time to pursue your hobbies. You're not having to clean as big a house. You're not having to maintain the gardens or all of that. Maybe it's the freedom of money. We've talked about that already. What about 
freedom of purpose. What I mean by that are when you have something else you want to do, whether it's write a book or take painting lessons or go on a culinary tour of Italy, whatever it is that is really on your, and I hate this term, but your bucket list, maybe owning a big house is preventing you from doing that. You can't leave it without worries that the, you know, the pipes might freeze or the furnace shut off, whatever. So to be able to go also in relationships, go spend time with the people who are most important to you and, and not be shackled by a property. So here's the vision statement. Here's your mission statement for your downsizing goal. After downsizing, I, we will have fewer or less blank, fewer or less possessions or less worries or less debt or whatever it is for your situation. We will have more or increased freedom, time, money, whatever, while maintaining, and this is critical, while maintaining X. Is it your lifestyle, your autonomy, your location, your social connections, whatever it is. So this is kind of coming full circle to what we started with is identifying what's important to you and how downsizing is really just a part of creating that future life. Okay, so that's what we have for today. <laughs> that's it. Um, it's a lot of food for thought. I would love your questions. We have a, a booklet that we will be sending to you as an ebook. We can also send you a hard copy if you prefer, but I just want to tell you a little bit more about what we'll be dealing with next week. So originally this was an hour and a half seminar. We broke it into two 45 minute seminars. Um, and next week we're going to be dealing with, what are we going to be dealing with? <laughs> the questions are going to be, is now the right time for us? So this is actually timing the decision, attaching a timeline to create this plan. Uh, and what about the market? What's going on in real estate right now? Uh, what are some of the property options? I guarantee you, I have a few that you've never thought about. And what makes financial sense? Now, I'm a realtor. I'm not a financial planner, but I can tell you what the different products price out at in terms of you know, condo apartment, detached house, whatever. Okay, so we'll come back to that. And then we'll make sure again that we have time to answer your questions. I really value your questions because it helps me to know A, that you're listening, <laughs> B, that we are prompting you to think about some things you might not have thought about before. Now, this is gonna be part two next week. So I hope you will come back. But then remember, I was talking about the other webinar we have about decluttering, because that's the huge thing for a lot of people. And then we also have uh, a webinar about the best renovations for return on investment. I love this one because it's another question that we get all the time. What should I do 12 or 24 months before we're ready to sell in order to get the biggest bang for the buck? And there is the place where you can register. It's on our website, smartrealtysolutionsingular.com. And I want to tell you about a, an exciting special contest we're having. I just love this. This is um, a, a picnic backpack. This is all that's included in it. It's got a nice picnic blanket. It's got a wine cooler. We're going to throw in a bottle of our wine a gas card and a grocery gift card. And at the end of it, we're also going to give you a property evaluation. So when you register to receive a pinpoint price analysis of your home, we are gonna put your name in a draw and we're gonna draw for this at the end of the month. So not only do you get some peace of mind about what your home might be worth, cause that's gonna determine a lot of future plans, um, it also is a great way to celebrate the end of summer and uh, pack yourself a picnic. Okay, so you just have to email us to register and we will follow up with you and put your name in the basket. We've got a few, we've got a few people already registered, so don't miss out. It's going to be a great prize. I think we valued it at around $200 and then plus 
the, the price analysis is another 250. This is what I usually charge for lawyers and things like that. Okie dokie. So I want to see if there's any questions. No questions. I really want to ask, see if you've got any questions. And in the meantime, here's how you can connect with us on Facebook, on it. Instagram and LinkedIn. If you are a social media person, then you can find our postings there and be up to date on all of the news and events and seminars. Um, and then you also know that you can ask me anything. Whoop, back it up. You can ask me anything by typing in the chat box now, or if you prefer, you can unmute yourself and we will do our very, very best to answer your questions. If that's more if that's more convenient for you, I would welcome those questions now. We have the time. I feel like maybe I should do like the um, Jeopardy tune or something. <laughs> okay, well, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And if there's anything we can do, in terms of your downsizing questions, we welcome any way that you can connect with us, we will connect with you. And I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. My name is Sharon Parento, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye for now.